Hi guys, this is Tony Harris and we are on day two of the NFL Flag Pro Championships at Pro Bowl. We are sitting here with Allison and Ryder who have both won NFL Flag Player of the Year in 2024 and will be honored at the NFL Honors next Thursday. Congratulations first, it's a huge honor. We're gonna start with Allison. Allison, just tell us how it feels to be the first female to ever receive the award and to be honored at the NFL Honors. I'm really excited first of all because this is an amazing opportunity but also because flag football is finally getting recognized and it's something that I've taken pride in for a very long time so it just feels amazing to be able to show that this is something real and that it's something special. Yeah and Ryder talk us through what that makes you feel like and what was the process of getting here and winning that award? I mean just Going here was just awesome and realizing that I started this from so young and from now where I'm at now is just like I'm getting recognized for something that I never thought I would be able to do. And it's amazing because not a lot of people have won this award actually ever. You two are the first to ever receive the award. So Allison, I want you to tell us something. For someone who's never played sports before and didn't start competing in flag until 2019, it's amazing to see what you've done so far. You're the first female to ever receive the award and to be honored by the NFL honors and from the biggest stars in NFL. Tell us what that honor is gonna be like. Well, I think flag, flag football has been my first sport, like you said, and it has taught me so much, but most importantly, it has taught me how to, how to work hard. And so the fact that I'm getting honored for something that I basically I was a beginner. I had I was a dancer, but it's completely different in, in a absolutely in a contact sport, and you know that it's yeah. just is completely different. And now being able to receive this award, it's it's insane to think how far I've grown. Because I remember in 2019 I wasn't even starting on offense, and it's and me and my team have grown so much together. So yeah, it's gonna be really awesome, and I hope that I can inspire other people because it doesn't matter where you start and. But the dream big. It does, and it's all about building the game and, you know, building for the people that are come, going to come behind you, right? Now, Ryder, you just said and stated that you've been playing since you were a little kid. I know you stated that you uh, are considered the poster child in Arizona because you've been playing so long. Tell us what that's been like, and because I would believe, for me, that would be an honor for people to know that I'm the, you know, the face of flag, I'm the one that's carrying on the game. Tell us how you feel about that. I mean, I was on the Cardinals tickets, and I think that was something that's never been done for for just anyone in Arizona, like a youth player especially. And I think that honor alone was kind of the start of my journey. Like I really wanted to take it serious after that. Like, I thought it was fun. I wanted to play other things, but that's when I realized like this this could be really serious. This could be big, but I never thought it would be just as big as it is now. Yeah, you know, it's all about that moment. Like even I've had those times before where I uh, dibble and dabble a little bit in everything. I'm playing football, I'm running track, I'm doing dance, I'm doing soccer and cheer, but like when you play football, you're like, okay, this is where I want to be, this is what I love, this is where that, this is what I want to continue, right? That's the feeling you get. Now, Allison, in your essay, you talked about when you were nominated, you talked a little bit about how you struggled a little bit before nationals because you had an overuse of an injury that almost caused you to have multiple broken bones in your foot. You said it was your teammates that had to stop you from practicing and your doctor yeah. didn't even think that you would be healthy enough to yes. make it to Nationals, but you were dedicated to that physical mm -hmm. therapy and you made it here and now look at you. You are yeah. NFL Flag Player of the Year. Having said all that, what emotions are you feeling now that you healed and made it back to the NFL Flag Championships once again? Honestly, I'm always a little bit on edge because <laughs> that overuse injury felt as though it came out of nowhere. It was just, it took a lot of a lot of patience with myself. I understood that my body can't, I'm not invincible, my body can't handle everything. So like, like you said, I went to physical therapy and I just kept moving and I never gave up. And just the fact that I'm able to be here with my teammates and be alongside them, not only that, but help lead them as a captain, especially on defense, to hopefully a win. That's, that's the plan, but it's, it makes me feel really proud. and excited for the next few days. Yeah, and a lot of people don't understand that proudness you feel inside, but it also stems from how much work you put in and how much physical therapy you put in to get here. So you've literally earned that right and that feeling, and I'm, I'm sure your family, your friends, your teammates are all excited that you're here and you're back. So that has to be something exciting. Now, Ryder, you told us that um, 
you set a high standard for yourself to achieve your goals, which is part of the reason you were a national champion MVP last year. How does that make you feel in having earned that title? And do you hope to earn that title again? I definitely want to work to earn that title again. I just set the standard high. I didn't want to lose. And I had to put it just a stop and messing around. I was going to bed early. I was not messing around. I just wanted to win. And I think that high standard was just like set everything. Having that mentality is usually what sets you apart from everybody else because everybody else is, I want to do this, I want to do that, and they don't necessarily have that dedication and commitment to play flag football or any sport that they're choosing to play. But because you set that high standard for yourself, your mindset, your mentality has totally changed. You said, this is the goals that I'm going to set for myself, this is what I want to achieve, and did you achieve them? You absolutely did, so that's an amazing achievement so far. Now, Allison. We're getting some, some exciting questions for me right now. Um, as a woman who's played tackle football for a very long time with men and transitioned over to tackle football with women, you see the game of flag is a little bit similar but different from tackle. How was the transition for you and what made you decide to play tackle? So my, my high school team never had a flag football team. Mm -hmm. It just, every, every single other school in my city had a flag football team. Mine did not because we were too small. And I knew that I was going to fall behind. I knew that everyone's playing flag off season, during their season in the spring. So I decided, listen, I'm looking at the guys on the football team. I'm like, I can, I might as well try. It was after COVID, so everyone was a little rusty because, you know, everyone's sitting at home for a while. So I went, showed up to practices. It was awesome. And I learned a lot, especially about, um, especially about how hard it is to be a female in a male-dominated sport, it was, I was always looked down upon. And you're, always, you're talking to the right just, person here. Yeah. I'm listening. I'm and resonating with you. I just, it was very tough mentally. Very, very tough. Because I had to show these, my peers, my teammates, that I am, I am their peer. I am your teammate. You belong I, there. Yes, yes, exactly. That I belong there. And it was, it was a rough time. But being able to play tackle and then transitioning back into flag, I think I was able to take a lot of the different skills from either side, mm -hmm. like because of my success in flag football and what I've learned from there, I was able to succeed in tackle football. And because of what I learned in tackle football, how hard I worked there, I was able to become faster and stronger. And that carries over into flag because you know the just overall speed and things things of that nature. But I think it was I think they base they very much bounce off each other. But it also highlighted the differences. I believe it was Vanita Crouch, the Team USA quarterback. Mm -hmm. She said that. Flag football is like ballet, and tackle football is like crump. They're both dancing, but it's very, very different. And it's you need turned different up skill a notch. Sets. Yes, it's very different. So that's, yeah, those are my thoughts on that. I this. think a lot of people don't realize that women have been in this game so long, but now is the time where they're getting a lot of recognition for playing the game of football. And, like, from what I take from it, like, playing so long with the men, you know, playing and from Little League all the way to college, a lot of people look down upon me and think I didn't deserve that spot because – they see that it's a man game. And yeah. we, as females, we know genetically we're not stronger, we're not yeah. faster, but mentally we are, you know, a little bit more tough. And there would be times in games or at practice where I would be physically, mentally, and drained because I'm putting in so much more work to be better mentally yeah. that physically everything's being drained and, and yeah. drained out of me. Now, Ryder, you said that your number one team is your family, particularly your mom that has been your most uh, your responsibility to make her proud. Uh, we feel that you've surpassed that proudness of um, giving it to your mom, but do you feel like you've achieved that goal, making your mom proud? I feel like I've done half the work. I've made her proud, and she, uh, she loves me a lot, but I feel like I haven't done enough. I want to put more work in. I want to get her house. I want to retire her. I want to do big things for her, for all the things she's done for me. So I just love her, especially my family. They've always supported me, even when things were tough. I just love my family. A lot of people don't understand it's also so important to have some type of support behind you. There would be times where I would be looking into the stands and there would be nobody there, but you still have to find that motivation. So when you see that family out there, that gives you that extra little push to go out there and do the best you can. Now I want to ask both of you, Allison first, how did you even find out about FLAG? That's that's a really tough question. Hold on, let me think. Right. No, you're good. <laughs> I, in, in seventh grade, it was after school program. I was throwing on a football with one of my counselors and he said I should just try playing in a local league and lo the local leagues aren't anything crazy, it's just recreational, but 
then my current coach found me and he's like hey come to the travel tournament and that was when the travel tournament circuit was very small and now watching it boom that's we basically we grew with the tournament so yeah. and Ryder what about you how'd you find out about that just like Allison just kind of like a local local thing join the league and everything just started picking up I started playing competitive traveling everything was just picking up and Starting off from something so small just changed into this. Last question for the both of you guys. We obviously know that you guys have been a big impact to your teams, not just off the field, but on the field. How do you guys handle all that stress with being student athletes and regular athletes? Allison? Well, I believe that the connection that me and my team ha that me and my teammates have formed, we become a family. And so they make it less stressful on my end because they remind me that we can lean on each other. That's something that we've been talking about a lot this tournament because we realize we've leaned on each other so much that we haven't, nobody's taken the step up to be like, I want the ball, I want this touchdown. And so we're trying to flip that around. But regardless, um, I'm sorry, I just. No, 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 you're okay. Handling the stress of yes. and the criticism. Yes, yeah. I think it just, it brings me a lot of joy to know that I can help put my teammates in the right position and to help them feel as though they can succeed. And what about you, Ryder? Like Allison said, we're like family. It's just, we don't question each other. We just think, oh, always, I got your back, you got mine. We just love, we, no, just, that's how it's we, just, we just love the game and we love each other and that's just what makes us family. Well, we're excited that you guys were the two recipients for the NFL Flag Player of the Year Award. We're excited to see you guys go shine out there with the biggest stars at the NFL Honors, and we truly support you the rest of this weekend and just cannot wait to see where your journeys take you. So thank you so much, Allison and Ryder, for joining us on this NFL Flag Championship weekend. Thank, thank you so much.